What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Next Man Up podcast. This is the 65th episode. Starting the new year off right, man. Um, I got my boys, Latif and Max. What's going on with y'all? No, it's been good, bro. I'm excited to start a new year. I want a lot for this podcast. I, I think we had like a goal to hit, and we did not do that. So I'm ready to um, start y'all strong. I want to ask y'all, though, what's y'all, y'all New Year's resolutions? We got a New Year's resolution topic. I'm not talking about NBA teams. I'm just talking about in general and life and stuff like that. I don't know if I always believe in New Year's resolutions. Like, I get you can, like, change stuff about yourself. But, like, just try to be, like, a better person, like, everyday thing. Like, don't make it a whole, like, I don't know. Don't give it a timetable. You know what I'm saying? Some of that shit can't be, can't be done. I'm trying not trying to get, like existential or like deep thinking i'm just saying like i think just being like a better person every day kind of thing i'm not trying to think of a i'm gonna do 65 push up like no i'm not gonna do that but like just try and keep I am trying to i'm trying to hit the gym bro me and me and jay gonna be in the gym this summer i'm obviously be in the gym before we get the summer but me and jay gonna be in the gym this summer i'm trying to get right bro i'm trying to get my six pack back like i had like sophomore year how long, so long, been, to do. How long has it been since you've been going to the gym uh i started like uh like when the semester ended but i wasn't consistent so i'm trying to get consistent that's my new, yeah, that's yeah. one of my new years, my, my resolutions, to be honest. What'd you say, Jax? I don't believe that shit. Oh, my bad. My bad. I don't believe that. But the reason why I don't believe that is because senior year, bro, I told myself January 1st, I'm not gonna be fat no more. I'm gonna start working out. Boom. I'm not fat. Feel me? So exactly. this year, um, I think I've been bulking since like May, May of 2023. So now I'm starting my cut. So first thing I want to do. Is start my cut. Then I want to get on Dean's list again this semester. I want to get on Dean's list. And yeah, that's really it. Um, help the podcast. More. Yeah, I was say, just keep keep doing the podcast too. Like keep building on this, kind of put more effort into Reflex, yeah. Reflex but okay. <laughs> Reflex. Reflex. Uh, uh, easy, I actually, 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 actually want to be back on Dean's list too because I haven't been, I've exactly. been on there. Why are you saying weird flex if you're saying you want to be back on it too? I, I haven't been on there since like, oh. he's strange, bro. My second semester last year, because I've been slipping up, bro. You got to prioritize school more. But uh, <laughs> I also, I also want to get back into like reading. But I want to get into like some, I don't know, more like mature books. Because I, when the last time I was reading a lot, it was like beginning of high school, middle school, for real, for real. Because you know, as soon as we had to start reading for like class, bro, it just took the fun out of it, bro. No, honestly, it, yeah. I've not read a book I think since uh, high school, just because of like. It's not fun having to annotate and like that kind of just takes all the enjoyment. Bro, annotating was terrible. Oh my god, I hate it. Just, it forced you to read books that you had no interest. Re- you know what I mean? Like I wish they would like let you choose a book and annotate with. And obviously, you can't teach a class like that. But like, no, I still, that still would have been that still would have been boring. Like pick something like, you're interested. In. Like pick something you're interested in. Pick a topic. Like if you want self help books, do that. If you want books on how to make money or get like different stuff like that. Like if you want to read actual fiction books, do that. But like having to all read. I don't even remember. Uh, Catcher on the Rise, just like I have no interest in that. Like Mr. D. Learn test annotating was disgusting. Oh my god! I don't know if I ever had him, but that Didn't was he crazy, a couple bro. of pages. Like he made you do it on yes, pages? bro. Yes, you had to do like he had to do like every single page, and he checked them, bro. That was bad, bro. I think I, I had, had, him, I had him for COVID, and I had to screenshot my. Ba- I remember I had to screenshot the pages. Yeah, it was bad, bro. But I kind of don't know. That's just something I just want to know y'all resolutions though. But you know, it's always triple your money. You know, stack your money. <laughs> I double your money. <laughs> I'm thinking about I'm thinking about working at a uh, T-Mobile and a Costco. That's what I'm thinking of. I double I double my money uh, from last year. So hey, we, that was my one of my goals last year. We hit it. We trying to triple it again. I'm gonna I'm gonna become a professional sports better this year. I'm going to put everything. I'm just gonna keep doing everything with prize picks, make a million dollars, and never look back. All righty. Um, with that being said, I think we can uh, get into the episode. Uh, we have a, a NBA and NFL episode, so we're gonna be talking about two two things. But um, let's just get into it. The main headline in the NBA is OG getting traded to the Knicks. I think it was for RJ Barrett, Manuel quickly, and I think a pick from the Pistons. It was a second, I think. We yeah, also got Precious Precious Achua. Yeah, Precious Achua. So <clears throat> just tell me, no. tell me how uh they got oh the Knicks got Achua and Malachi Flynn, but yeah. Don't Malachi Flynn. yeah, nobody. But tell me, tell me how you guys feel about this trade. If you want to go, you need to go. I'll go. Um every time a trade is made, the internet wants to make like someone got fleeced. Like this side got fleeced, this side got fleeced. Like the internet is so reactionary and they want to have a hot take or like Something like that. It's so weird. Like every single trade don't gotta be a fleece. Like 
there is good and bad to 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 both the trades. I know we're gonna talk about this uh later, but I personally feel like the Knicks want to trade. I don't really get anyone saying the Raptors want to trade. I seen a lot of people saying the Raptors want to trade. I don't know how. From just a standpoint of one, okay, you get Emmanuel quickly. You need a guard play a lot. Dennis Schroeder has not been that good, and you needed uh, a scoring punch uh, next to Scotty Barnes. I think, I think Emmanuel quickly fits perfectly next to Scotty Barnes. He's a great off ball player. He can uh, run a pick and roll. He's a great shooter. Um, he has nice like a floater game as well. He can improve as a finisher as well. He's really young and he has room to grow. But you got R.J. Barrett back in a trade. People have not been talking about that enough. And I've seen people saying R.J. Bellin has talent. Sure. But this is year like four, year five almost. Like, we know what R.J. Barrett is. He can't shoot. He can't really defend. He's a good finisher at getting to the basket, but, like, actually finish, finish around the basket barely. Like, it's not nothing R.J. does really crazy. So I feel like paying him for three years, upwards of $27 million per year, that's hell. So that really tanks the value of the trade for me. And then you also have to pay a man quickly in the offseason where he's a restricted free agent and going to command about 25 to $30 million on the open market. And you have to match that. You have to because you just traded for him. So I'm not a fan of paying a six man or if he's going to be a starting point guard of his archetype because I don't think Emmanuel quickly selling is that crazy high, $25, $30 million, especially when he hasn't really proved anything. He was second a year and six million a year voting. And in the playoffs, he was god awful. And both times he made the playoffs, he was terrible. So we're, we're paying him off of what we think he could be when he hasn't proved much. So I, I don't really like the trade that much for Raptors. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think I fleeced, but I don't see how people I don't see how people are saying the Raptors want to trade. That's for me. That was my take on it. So I'm beyond confused um, as far as the package they got back. They, I think, traded him at the worst possible time. You could have got RJ and quickly and two first-round picks last year if you did this trade. Teams were willing to throw three first-round picks for OG last year, and they said no. There was that questionable whatever, the the, uh, the mystery team, sorry, that was going to throw three first-round picks for OG. I would probably rather have those three first-round picks right now than five years of R.J. Barrett. Um, I don't love moving forward with that. That's not a crazy thing to say. I'd rather have three first-round picks than five, five years, 30 million a year on R.J. Barrett. The best part of the trade for me for the Raptors is quickly. I think quickly getting the freedom and offense. I agree. I don't know if he gets that $30 million ceiling, but I think he will excel more than he did with the Knicks. Um, on the Knicks side of things, I like it. I think though that uh, I saw like a TikTok about it and it was like a Knicks fan or something. And he's like, it was like, if this is the only move they do, I don't like the trade, but if they keep building on this, then it's great. And I a hundred percent agree. You have OG, if you have if you have him at what is he like 20, 22 mil? Or is he gonna be a free agent though? Yeah, he's a he's an expiring contract. Right now, OG yeah. makes 18.5, but he's slated to make like 25, 30. I've seen his highest 35 there was, too. There was also something that said that OG was willing to he wanted to take get a that money over, except yep. New York, he would take a pay cut. Yeah. So I still think Randall's the expendable piece. I don't think Randall moves forward with this. This team is like, I think if they want to go out and get someone, Randall will be the contract they meet. But they do have other pieces. You still got Quentin Grimes. Even Chenzo went off for 40 like a night or two ago. You still got Josh Hart. You have like good quality pieces. Mitchell Robinson still. Hartenstein's played eh. But like as a backup big, he could be solid. You have pieces to move forward with. If they can go out and finally get that guy, whoever it is, whether it's JoJo or they can try and trade for Trey Young or something and try and get a star, star player, you can build off this. Trey Young. <laughs> I don't, like, I, trust me, I don't like the I don't like the one two punch defensively at all of Jalen Brunson and Trey Young. Yeah, that's terrible. But it could be like I'm trying to think of a guy, Donovan Mitchell, but still defensively it's scary. Um, fine, Donovan Mitchell doesn't matter. But having OG is a great building block to move forward with. I think defensively he could pick up any any team's best player. You have Jalen Brunson there now. Um, maybe Julius Randle stays. I don't know money wise. I don't know how they make that work. The whole thing is, for me now with them going forward, they have to get a guy, and you have to figure out the coaching situation. If you want to keep Tibbs, more power to you. But you can't – I think, like, they got to figure this out now. you got to get some momentum going. you got to get the new coach oriented with the team. Like, this – the Knicks could be really good in, like, two, three years if they can put the right pieces together. They can finally pull the trigger on a star. If they can get a big three, 
big four maybe like it, it's new york and they haven't been competitive in such a long time so if i'm a knicks fan i'm like beyond excited about the possibilities but since zion since Kyrie, since kd when all this was like the knicks could be this good and they're not so the potential is great and it's awesome to have these high hopes but they have to execute on these things and i'm just i'm gonna wait but like i'm curious to see if they do it so as a trade as a whole i think the knicks won i like the knicks side a lot better um again i i don't know what rj barrett's ceiling is um i don't know how much he could put out he's having a great year this year so i think the knicks capitalized on value pretty well he's shooting really well he's shooting insanely well when he couldn't shoot the basketball at all so he's shoot this is you guys agree this is probably one of his best years he's had in the league who's talking about yeah RJ. i wouldn't say he's having a great year though rj as far as rj as far as comparing rj rj barry rj to rj yeah, it's just rj barry hold on compared RJ to hasn't been good he hasn't been good best no. year in the league it's, i don't think so no it's probably it's, it's probably it's probably his best year but to say great sorry yeah i'm not trying to sorry i'm not comparing him to like a great player i'm saying in years of rj when he would just chuck bricks he's shooting well from the three like i think the knicks capitalize on value right now they got the most they can get out of him what I think Bro. is, I think that this is kind of like a weird spot. I don't think anybody, I can't, I don't think you can say anybody has won or lost his trade so far. I think you just have to see how things pan out because with RJ, um, I guess coming out that draft, you could say the three guys were Zion and Ja, and then I guess you could throw RJ in there. So I think RJ still has some untapped potential. Maybe a change of scenery uh, helps him tap into that potential. Could be, I don't know. You get Emmanuel quickly, that does wonders for the Raptors. They needed a guard. Everything that Chief said. Um, and then when you and then when you look at the Knicks side of things, as of right now, I would say OZ does everything better than RJ. Um, he's a better defender, a better shooter. So I guess you add that 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 makes a little bit of a little bit of a difference. The thing uh you said with Trey Young or even a Donovan Mitchell, I don't think that necessarily moves the needle. I feel like you will have to add somebody on the echelon of Joel and B, honestly. Um, I was watching Theo Pinson and he was talking about that this moves the needle for him. I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know why. Um, but as of right now, like you said, Max, if this is a starting move for the Knicks, then cool. If they build up if they build upon it, great trade. But as of right now, I don't know. I don't see the the needle being moved for any of the sides. Again, adding RJ could be untapped potential there, adding Emmanuel quickly. That's works wonders for the Raptors. So I don't think anybody has lost or won this trade. I think we just have to see how it pans out. I don't get the untapped potential part. By the way, RJ's best year was 21 22, I think. Um, just yeah, I don't know. You say he was hit a three, he's shooting 33. percent Like, yeah, he like, was shooting 40. percent I thought that he was, was shooting, he was shooting very well. Or are you talking time. about this year? Are you talking about you said this year? This is his best year. I, I want to make sure I don't think that's true at all. I, like, I know. I just look back. I think it's 21 22 is his best year. Okay. Cause he, he hasn't been yeah, good was, this year. Like, he was shooting a clip at like 40% or something this year, which was earlier in the season. He was like, hooping. Um, in the beginning, I, yes. The untapped potential. Like, I, I just, I don't know what the Raptors are building, right? You know what I mean? You got IQ, but they want to keep Scotty as a point guard. But I feel like RJ's a ball dominant guy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just confused on what they're doing. Like, I guess. I'll see when Pascal gets traded, but then you're yeah. building with, I think they'll probably trade Pascal. You'll probably trade like Gary Trent to like a contender or something. Like he could provide good minutes. You're probably keeping Jakob Poto, I get like, like they're, I get, you don't need to build cause they're still rebuilding, but like the guys they have right now just aren't really making a whole lot of sense to me, like side by side. And you're just getting pieces. Like I think RJ, I get he's Canadian, whatever, maybe like he's going to be happy there, but like, if RJ plays well, like I would not be shocked if they trade him too. You know what I mean? Like I don't know if RJ is going to be part of their future kind of thing. I, I don't know how too many teams are going to just be excited to trade for RJ Barry. Like I said, I, I don't think if he's he, a good he's, thing. Then maybe, but yeah, I get it. He doesn't. I, it's, he's a weird player. I don't think he's that good at all, honestly. Uh, to be honest, I, like like I said, he doesn't do anything really, really too great. He can't shoot. Um, you're a wing and a leader can't shoot. Like the Knicks literally just got so much better with. O as far as fit wise, like he literally can knock it, can't not knock it down open three. Um, as far as Pascal Siakam, I don't know what team he's gonna go to because obviously, um, he's an all NBA level player, but like if you put him on a Pacers, which I think is probably the best fit for him, or well, not best fit, I think that's the, one of the teams gonna be trading for him. It's like, what do you really want to give up? Because Pascal is on his expiring contract, 
for one. He has one more year left on his deal. And also, you don't know, you can't guarantee he's gonna resign. Like, what what actually do you want to give up from? And as far as like the Kings, don't really think he helps them either. Cause I think they're one of the teams in in the race. And it's like the Kings need defense. And Pascal is a solid defender, but like he's not moving the needle on, on defense. Well, did you guys and did you did you see ahead. the uh Wiggins and Kuminga for Pascal? Who says no? If he if he went that. to the Warriors, if he went to the Warriors, cool. I, th- I think you'd be inclined to re-sign with Steph. You want to play with Steph Curry. I think you'd be inclined to re-sign. Yeah. The only issue is Clay. I think you got to figure out Clay if he's going to be a moving piece. If you can trade Clay, Clay too, because you can capitalize on that, maybe maybe you can get a third star. But deep, I'm saying if you could like trade pieces around. If you can get Wiggins and Kuminga for Pascal, you could definitely trade Clay for a mid tier. Uh, whatever below level, they will, have, they, will, they will have to match money. I it might they might have to include like CP3. I don't know how much I think CP3 can pay like 30 million or something like that. Maybe not from the Warriors, I don't remember. Um, but they will have to match money. I think you do it, you do like Moody and Kaminga because I could say, I understand it from the uh Raptors perspective. Uh, just get guys, they just need youth, they need youth yeah. to start building them. Yeah, I don't know how Kaminga and them fits on the team because they can't like really like uh, doesn't matter. He well, Kaminga can't shoot. But um, I think they would try to trade for like Air Pods. Like Pods would be a, a great player to ch- uh, try to get on that uh, potentially. Air Pods, Brandon Pod. No, Brandon Pod. Yeah, Brandon Pozinski. Uh, uh, anyways, whatever. Cool. Um, <laughs> call them Air Pods. Yes, that's what people call them, bro. I'm for real. I hear about that. I thought you said Eric Pods. I was no, like, no, no, Air Pods. Air Pods. <laughs> anyways. Um, I don't know how many teams he fits on. I, the Warriors, I, I love that. That's a great, that would be was, a great trade. Was, uh, the five teams I kept seeing, what was it? It was the Kings, the Pacers, the Mavericks? Yeah, I think I saw the Mavericks too. They, the offer, Mavericks. Uh, they offer a THJ. Um, I think, what's that one dude? They, their backup center. I forgot his name. Rashawn, um, Rashawn Holmes. Rashawn, Rashawn Holmes, yeah, him. Um, and some other players. for, yeah, for like, uh, what, what are the Raptors getting there? You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. kind of like the fit, but like, what are the Raptors honestly getting? Like, there's no. Are you giving up? Or are you going to give up on a uh, Hardy? I'll probably give up Hardy. Yeah, for sure. Probably, definitely, definitely. Yeah, you give up Hardy. You give up Hardy. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Don't give up Masai, lively. You gotta keep lively. Yeah, you're not gonna lively. That's but, like your Masai, only defensive piece right now. Masai really, really, really sabotaged the Raptors like really bad. Not moving off them. Not moving off them last year when they had so much value. Pascal had two years left on his deal. Uh, OG was going for like three to five first. All That's stuff. what I'm saying. Like, like, it makes no – it's just the same thing that Chicago did. I think Chicago should have traded Levine and DeMar like last year, two years ago still. Yeah. And I think this is worse. These guys had so much more value than DeMar and Levine did in my opinion. Like, you're uh, – maybe Levine you get a better package than Pascal, but there's no – like, if someone's offering you three to five first for OG, how would you not take that? Yeah, I don't that's a Rudy Gobert level trade, right? There. Like, that's insane. I don't know what Masai was thinking. I don't know because, like, it was an obvious direction for the Raptors. Even Raptors fans knew this. You guys need to rebuild. They were trying to retool, but then you get to the offseason, you just let Fred Van Fleet walk for nothing. So, nothing Masai has been doing over the last few years has really made sense. He is honestly living off that 2019 championship run because outside of that, he has not really done nothing really crazy um, to benefit the Raptors at all. So, he is. Looking more and more fraudulent by the day, and I think we talk about this trade. You got, you kind of got to factor it in because obviously we hear now you can't look back in the past, but you really add the context that they could have got way more last year. Then that really makes how valuable this trade is look even worse. And I think people, not enough people are talking about that. Like, bro, you you got uh, the only pick you got for it for OG and Anobi, who is one of the best defenders in the entire NBA, is a second round pick. Three and D role players to this level to this echelon are really really hard to find. So it's like. You got a second round pick from him, bro. Come on now. So yeah, I think you gotta you gotta add that RJ Barry, bro. I got I, like, I gotta saying. keep I, I gotta keep emphasizing this, bro. RJ, that's scary. I, I, I've been talking to Raptors fans, you know, me or JD being a Discord, bro. Like, this is one dude, like he's like uh he just ignores like they got RJ Barry. Like, he's not good, bro. <laughs> he's dead, not good. Like he's okay, not okay. good, bro. I'm sorry. I, this might come off as disrespectful. Would you rather RJ Barrett or Jordan Poole? RJ Barrett, RJ Barrett, bro. Right, but bro, how much bro. though? A lot. I'm not gonna lie. R- yeah, I, yeah, Jordan, no, I ain't gonna lie. Jordan Poole. I don't like Jordan Poole, but like I'm just like I don't think Jordan Poole's a great player. But like that's a similar levels where like you're getting kind of a negative, and you're giving you're give you're getting a negative and having to pay him 150 mil. 
I think uh I think honestly, I think Paul's contract is way worse. He's making 32. Uh RJ's making like 27. Oh, I thought he was 30. No, he's making like 27, and then Paul is his trash. Paul is honestly trash. Like he's not a good like he not a good player. Fun at all, and he can't score efficiently. Well, only thing that I'm happy about with this RJ Barrett trade is this is no more talks with the Bulls getting RJ. Uh, I like, wish that would have been so funny if we saw Zach Levine trade. And all we saw is Jade in the group chat. Bro, we can we we can roll the clip from from last year when we first started the podcast. I do not want Rowan, bro. So I'm happy he's out of this whole thing. The Bulls will never have any conversations with the Bulls Jayden, and RJ. That's over with. If, if the Pels and the Bulls met in the finals, you're going for the Pels, right? With Zion, Pels with Zion. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. I'm just making sure. I didn't know if it was player or team who came. Don't even put don't even put that out in the universe. That's never happening. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very very unlikely finals matchup. Yeah, bro's a weirdo, but I think we can we can move on from this. I think we hit hit um all right. So New Year's resolutions, uh NBA edition. Um yeah, so just tell me your New Year's resolution for your NBA team, Latif. I don't I don't know what um he picked three. He picked all the NBA teams, don't worry. He picked yeah, three. I think he so he, let's have him um, go last because he's just gonna say 30 different um 30 I got four teams. I got four people. I was just not, not to try to yeah, you can go first. All right, so um, obviously my team is the Pelicans so far. Hold on, pause, pause, because I have three, basically, and you have two, so I don't know what's the big difference, but you have two teams. Uh, remember, you have, you're a yeah. Bulls fan. Remember that. I'm, okay. I'm picking two. I have two because I have my second favorite team. It's been there for a while, but okay. it's just not even close. All right, but I, I want to start with the Pelicans. So I think this year has kind of been a very, 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 very rough year. <laughs> Um, obviously I expected Zion to be better than what he has shown um, this year. And a lot of it comes down to uh, the offense, how the offense is being ran. It's very piss poor, I should say. Um, I think it's, it's been some trade talks with, I, what, what did the Wizards say that they're willing to give, uh, they're willing to listen to trade talks with for Tyus, something like that. So if, and I said this earlier, we need a playmaker on this team. We need playmaking so, 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 so very bad. So if we could get, like, Tyus and, and um, Gafford, that'll work so well for the Pelicans. Like, literally. Paint defense is a problem on this team, and it's because JV is so not mobile. He's not agile. Uh, he's free in the pick and roll. Zion is also free in the pick and roll. So if we added Gafford, that will help our defense so much. You had Tyus Jones, a playmaker. We need playmaking on the team. I'm sorry. We don't need a scoring guard. CJ CJ has played great this season, but we, we honestly don't need a scoring guard. The offense has been abysmal. I don't understand why we send Jordan Hawkins to the to the G League. Um, he's terrible on defense. He's actually – you could actually say that he's a liability. But how seeing how bad the offense is, uh, we need him. So I don't understand what's going on um, with how the team is being ran. Lily Green sucks. Honestly, if I could get him out of here today, I would do that. But, you know, that's not going to happen. So if I was to, if I was to make a move right now, it would be a move to get uh, Tyus and Gafford. I don't mind. You have that. another team. You have another team, Jaden. I, I don't mind. I, we, I don't Bulls, mind. I don't, I think talk, I think talk about the Bulls. You're not gonna talk about the Bulls. Okay, all right. Move I, off I think, of move off of Zach Levine. Uh, build around, build, build around my guy P. Will and uh, Kobe. <laughs> Been saying that. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> I think a lot of teams should go for Tyus Jones. I think Tyus Jones will be a name in the deadline. But I like him with the Bills. Uh, what? What? We here? I want him. On, I want him on the business. I want him on the business. I'm yeah. serious. You want him to get like have Kate work off the ball? Road to four wins. I mean, his his usage needs to go down. First of all, actually, the Pistons are winning tonight. They're beating the Rockets. Um, but I think his usage needs to go down. Like that'd be beneficial to him. So I would love to have another probably ball. Yes, you need a ball, another ball handler. I'm not gonna lie, no troll. I would trade. I would trade Ivy for him and um like a, a few other people. people. Like if you got like Gafford back and um and um well a trade, you, you could use anything right now. Your team just stinks. Yeah, I would trade. I would trade Ivy, but you know, I'm just saying you could use Denny Avdia at this rate. Um. My, <laughs> my, my two right. teams, uh, my, my first one um, for the Thunder is stop thinking about the future and focus on the now. Um, the big deal is, like, I don't want to give up our entire draft pick for this season. But realize that you're going to have to pay Shea. You're going to have to pay Chet. You're going to have to pay Jay Will. So I'm not worried about those 2029, 20, 2030 first round picks and who we're going to take. Keep a couple, that's fine. But I still think we have 15 plus picks. 
So we need to make some moves and build board to compete next year, the year following. Maybe you can let this team ride out this year. I'm not saying you have trade for Laurie Markkinen right now. A lot of free agents this summer. Like, be smart, but know that these next two, three years should be years to compete. Like, these should be years with Shea competing at an MVP level right now, Chet as an up-and-coming uh, up and coming star, Jay Wills up-and-coming star. We have great role players. A lot of people under rookie contracts. Like, this is a time you should be trading for stars or signing stars while you have these guys under rookie contracts. So just for the future, like, don't worry about 2030, 2032, all these picks you could get. Focus now. Do what you got to do to lock these guys in and move forward. Two is the Pacers. Play defense. Please play defense. That's it. I just want to know when did when did uh when did Max become a Pacers fan? I did not know he was a Pacers fan. Did anybody like, else know uh, that? He's from Paul Indiana, Jones. bro. I Paul understand Jones. that. But I, I could have sworn he was a Bulls fan. I'm, I I, I could have no. sworn. No, you can no, never. You go back to the no, no, no. there is a clip of Jaden saying me and Max, and I said I am not a Bulls fan by any stretch of the matter. The Pacers have always been my number two, um, for Paul George, and that's just kind of moved from there. I like Bo and Sabonis there. Um, I used to not like LeBron. I've told you guys this. I used to not like LeBron. I wanted Paul George, Roy Hibbert, David West, George Hill. Those Pacers teams were some of my favorite teams to watch uh, growing up, and LeBron always killed them. Okay, so your 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 news resolution is not for them to make a move; it's just for them to magically play, play defense. defense. Play defense. That's not possible. Play, I don't want them to make a move at this point in time. I don't want them to because if you trade for if you trade for Pascal, what are you gonna give up, Jarris? You're gonna give up no. on Jarris Walker. Like I'm probably, saying, like probably Benedict Matherin. That's terrible. No, he, like Benedict Matherin's good. He has high high potential. Yeah, he's good. Better. He's good, but he's, he's we talking about Pascal Siakam here. We talking about an All NBA level player. But you just said it yourself. He's gonna be a free agent. He's gonna. You won't trade for him unless you have the like actual confirmation he's gonna resign. Like you're not gonna. That's do what that. I'm saying. So like. Like you, I think you can give up someone on a whim, but you're not giving up Benedict Matherin. I think I don't know Raptors, who you think Benedict Matherin is. I don't know who you think Benedict Matherin is. Oh, he, he's gonna he's a microwave scorer, but he's he's pretty efficient. But he cannot play, mate. He cannot defend. So I don't know what you think he is. But who did man, you compare him to? I don't remember me comparing him to anyone. Unless we talk about I think I, I saw some. I saw a, a, a good comparison to Matherin, but I can't think of it. Like Lou Will. Nah, nah, not Lou Will. He's, big, he's bigger. Than, he's bigger than Lou Will. Nick Young. No. I think he's like a six. He's like a six man type player though. Like he's he's a really good shooter. He has a nice offensive game, but he cannot play make and he cannot defend. So, but hey, that's that's a whole other conversation. It's, it's, it's Tyrese Halliburton to play make. Yes, but you need other playmakers in the starting lineup. I mean, like it's not going to be just one he's person. McConnell. Anyways, all right. So y'all done with that. Uh, I'll probably start with – I don't want to start with the Pistons. They got so much to fix. It's like you, I'll be here forever. Um, not my team, but I'm a LeBron fan, so I'm, I have to talk about the Lakers. Uh, my New Year's resolution for the Lakers is to trade for Zach Levine. We need an offensive lift badly. The defense is honestly not as good as I thought it would be. So we need an offensive lift badly. I'm sorry. Um, keep LeBron at point guard. But Rui can go. D'Lo can go. Uh, What's his name? Um, bro, I'm always blank on his name. I don't know why, bro. I, I was Max a big fan. Christy. Max Christie can go. Send him back home to Chicago. Um, and JSS Max can go. Wills. No. Yeah, uh, Jalen Hushfino can also leave. That would be my trade package and probably a pick <clears> or two. <throat> we need Zach Levine. This team is not a championship level team right now. Honestly, it's not. LeBron is having a top five, top seven level season. And we're 17 and 17. AD is playing like a defense play of the year, averaging like 26 and 12. We're 17 to 17. Honestly, if I could fire Darvin Ham today and get a new coach, I would do it because he sucks. He is terrible. All he does is sit there with his hands in his pocket looking dumb. Like he just does, he does not do anything. And I don't know. It's like firing firing him in the middle of the season. Like, who are we going to get? Like, that, that would be kind of crazy. Um, let's feel it handy. Just imagine to be kind of the uh, a great head coach or something like that. But I don't know. That's the Lakers. Um, who else I'm talk? So the Pistons. My my New Year's resolution for the Pistons is honestly just let like I don't even know what to say. I, I don't. It's it's so much wrong with that team. It's like I they, they're trying to be active at the deadline. It's like, who are we getting? Who? Like I seen Tobias Harris. Does that make sense? Like he's 32. Miles Riches. 
Be for real. I, <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. People like saying, like, Miles Bridges, like, not only is he a woman beater, but, like, come on, bro. He's not elevating the team enough for – for to, to, like, if you're going to be a woman beater, bro, like, this is going to sound crazy. But, like, you have to be a certain echelon of player for you to get away with stuff like that. And am I, am I, this is sports real. Like, you're not lying. You're not lying, though. You gotta, you gotta come on, bro. This. You got to cut this. No, I'm not cutting that. Obviously, he's terrible. Nobody should be doing that. Obviously, you, he's it's not, not justifiable. It, you get, a, real you get away with a lot of stuff when you're exactly when you're like Tiger Hill just punched somebody uh, uh last offseason and got away with it. Like, come on, bro. You get a lot. Of, it's obviously NFL between NBA, but you get away with a lot more if you're a better player. Like this, this is the reality of sports. You get a lot it's more not, leeway. A lot more leeway, and he don't deserve it because he's not even playing well this year. But uh, my my New Year's resolution for the Pistons is to just manage your talent right. Like, do not put lineups on the court where it's all bench units. Or it's three negative shooters in the lineup around K Cunningham. Show some resi- uh, resilience. Show some fight. Um, try to get to at least like 20, win- 20 wins this season, please. That's not happening. <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> no, 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 no. Just, just be happy if you get ten. That's ridiculous. Come on now, let's be for real. <laughs> Why is that? I, I have a question for you. Twenty eight straight. I understand that. Go ahead, Jay. And you What's barely going? beat the Raptors to make it twenty nine. I don't get how that's ridiculous to say 20 wins is ridiculous right now. I don't unless think so. Something, I, uh, unless something major changes and you guys actually start playing like a unit, if you keep playing how you played in those last 28 games, you're not going to win 17 more games. What makes you think you're going to continue to play like that? I mean, I, what Kate makes is you having think his otherwise? Best. What is I he think showing you at all? I see I'm not gonna lie, man. Max, Max, Max. This was like the hard. I don't know if you actually like you didn't watch the entire losing streak, but the schedule was insane. The schedule was insane. We were playing like the best teams in the NBA on the a night to night basis. All, five of the top. That was one up. game, bro. That's one game. Come on now. We we you actually watched. You were playing the Celtics, uh, Lakers, uh, Sixers. We played the Sixers like three times in one week. I swear to God, like it, it was crazy. Like we played in Jalen Duran missed time. Like obviously this is a terrible team, but like. I don't like they're gonna get better and improve. Um, Monty got to figure some stuff out. I think if we're not gonna play our Sir Thompson, um, on a, on a consistent basis, now. I'm about to like, like send him the to big, the G League, send Mark Sass to the G League. But the big issue is just like you guys have like someone's got to step up that's not named Kate Cunningham, it can't be Kevin Ox. Like, Duran has, been, has been amazing when he plays, but yeah. I mean, you guys played good teams, you also played bad teams. Bogey's been Bogey's been 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 amazing when he plays. Yeah, you guys hold on. Like saying you just played good teams is wrong. You play I didn't say that they have this they had the strongest strength of schedule in the NBA when to start the season. They literally did. That's, That's a fine. fact. You, you, you also played bum teams you should have beat. That's why true. they had they had better rosters than us. Why should why should we beat beat them? Cade, bro. What? He's better than Lamelo. But question. I didn't question, say that. Question. I didn't say that. I, I said that. I said that. that. Open. I don't know. I, I still think Latif said that. I don't know. I didn't say that. Anyways, that. so I see that Monty gets a lot of flag, and I understand like he's there's a lot of things that he should be doing better, but I just don't understand why he gets so much flack when this it's just like the roster is built terribly. There's not enough shooters. Literally, is K what, what's this what's the starting lineup? K Killian. Um no Killian don't start. It's K Ivy uh Bogey, um Stu and Duran when Stu come back. First off, Stu is not that great of a shooter. I don't know why he's in that. He's not that. He's not that great of a shooter. You don't have enough shooting on the team, honestly. Uh, I would say your best offensive players are probably Cade, Ivy, and um, a Bogey. I guess. Well, I shouldn't say I guess a Bogey, but those are your those are your three best scorers. I would say. I guess you could throw Duran in there, but that's off of just uh, Cade's playmaking uh, and creation. But um, besides that, it's just like not enough. Like you don't have enough of anything on the roster. Just I don't, I don't understand why he just gets so much flack when the roster is, is just constructed so terribly. He gets so much flack because he's getting paid twenty million dollars, and you're supposed to elevate a team. And he's not doing it at all. Every single night, they don't look prepared to play defense at all. Like not even at all. There's no uh, sets. There's no scheming. There's nothing. It's just like he goes out there and does nothing. It's like he just walking around that clipboard writing stuff on like he, he just does nothing. Like Monty, I'm not gonna lie, Monty is living off of the bubble and a 2021 finals appearance where he had a great roster. Outside of that, 
Monty is not doing anything. He's a, he's not a good coach. Realistically, he's not a good coach. I don't believe got, it, bro. I feel like he got coaches, he got out coached. Team. He got out coached by he got out coached by uh, Mike Budenholzer in the finals. We, are we forgetting that they lost four straight? But go ahead, bro. Coaches can only do so much, bro. Like he can't he can't suit up and step on the floor and play, bro. You have to look at which uh, at, at your players. It's it's not enough, bro. It's it's not Jayden, enough. Jaden, Jaden, you you have to give your team, bro. The, Monty's whole thing is supposed to be he's supposed to be a player coach. They don't look motivated half the time, and on defense, it looks like they don't know they don't know what they're doing half the time. So obviously, he's not talking about schemes with them. Every single switch, every single screen, they switch. Every yeah. single one. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> Nobody fights over a screen or nothing. So obviously, he's not getting them ready to play every single night. The entire offense is just cave pick and rolls. It's it's actually ridiculous to see. He really does pin downs. Nope. He's using Asar Thompson as a spot up shooter, Jaden. Yeah, what are no, we doing right now? So that. that's why he's getting so much flack. Like <laughs> he, it's like he didn't watch Asar Thompson come, like take like it's just like he took a job. He had Ivy in the doghouse for like 15 games. He was starting killing a haze. Like he had a crush on him or something. Like, what are we talking about? That's what that, the decision he's making is terrible. Jayden, he, he does all he does all bench lineups. He he Ivy is getting in the doghouse for killing a haze. Killing a haze is terrible. He keeps playing James Wiseman over uh over Marvin Bagley when Marvin Bagley is clearly better than him. Like yeah. I don't know what. So he makes terrible decisions. That's why he's getting so much flack. My, my James Wiseman is the worst player in the NBA outside of the Nets. I swear to God, he sucks. But go ahead. Jaden was on the pod where we talked about that. What? Jaden was James on the pod where we, talk, where we talked about the Pistons. Oh yeah, James Wiseman is terrible. Oh, oh, I can't stress it enough. He can't set a screen. He cannot really get rebounds. He can't defend. He can't shoot. It doesn't look score. like he knows what he's doing out there, bro. Oh no, he yeah, his IQ is, is, is negative. Negative IQ. He's a bust. And we have I don't I don't know if we talk about it enough. Like, he's one of the worst busts of all time, honestly. He's terrible at basketball. Like if you I want to see one of them Stephen A. Kwame Brown type of rants. Like, that's how like he's uncoordinated. Like it's nothing he does on the court well. Like he sucks, he's terrible. But that's my New Year's resolution for Pistons. Just uh, try to build your talent or something. I don't know what even what to say because if they make a move at a deadline for like a Tobias Harris, I don't know how much sense that makes because I don't know if he would resign. He's a free agent. Um, I just don't know how much sense that would make. He would help, like getting like a Mikael Bridges, even a t- t- Tobias Harris would help the team so much. Like, like K just needs like some shooters around him, some people to help him offensively. Uh, lastly, for the Cavs, just keep fighting until until um, Mobley and Garland uh, what come back. F- when was he a Cavs fan, Max? When was he a Cavs fan? fan? I've been a Cavs fan. No, Cavs he fan. he made that up a little bit ago. He has been on that for a little bit now. Made made that up is crazy. Uh, I, I, I didn't mean, like. I don't know where. I watched Cavs him. Are. I watched him for like eleven years of uh, my life. Um, LeBron had been there for. That's LeBron's home. I don't know why I would be Cavs fan. What's going now. This is uh, <laughs> what? Wait, wait. So I'm confused. So no, it's like that's. It's just the it's the biggest. I don't know. Latif has I, I, some sort of tie to team, what's Team, I have Cleveland, Pistons, um, and that's it. I'm not Lakers. I've fan. never heard of. I've never. First off, I've never heard of Cleveland. I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say. Um, yeah, I thought you were gonna throw Dallas, Dallas up there too. Um, yeah, but, because um, I, do, I, do, I do know Magic. it's Cleveland. I didn't know it's Cleveland and Detroit, but I just don't. Mm-hmm. I get LeBron was there, but like LeBron was in Miami and LA too. I agree with that, and I, I support them teams, but he was definitely watch. You even watch the first couple years of uh, Cleveland, LeBron? Oh no, 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 no. I was a, a child, bro. I was. What are you talking about? I started watching like probably like. So what does he mean? No, I, I seen it. I seen this. I seen this last year, probably like 2010. So that's that's more Celtics. that's more my thing. If you watched him all these years at Cleveland, I get it. But that's why I'm kind of like. If that's LeBron's home. And you um, grew up. You probably started was, watching was, Bron when he left, like that 2010 season. My my first season watching Bron was when he lost to the. Uh, Boston. Like, I was I was obviously like a kid, so I couldn't really, you know, what I'm saying. Eleven years is kind of crazy, but uh, yeah, he just why he just made so, that. <laughs> but that's LeBron's home. This is uh, you know, what I'm saying that's just, that's no, the pinnacle. He's, way it's, the pinnacle he's way there, what he was there from 03 to ten. That's seven years, and then was there. I don't know he's been there for eleven. He's been there for eleven years, but I haven't physically like watched him on a consistent 18? basis for eleven years. He's yeah, been there for eleven years, probably. You watched it for four. I don't, I don't even think he's, he's watched it for like three. Five. Five, you're lying. He was there for four years. With so you should be uh, a Lakers fan by that rationale too, though. Because uh, not really, Lincoln. though. Not really. Like I said, like I said, like if you could listen to me, I said this is the, it was a one pinnacle of his career. Two, it's his home. He's from Cleveland, bro. So why would I not be a fan of the? What's pinnacle of his career? So where was Peak Brown at? Where is Peak Brown at? No pinnacle of his career. Like 2016 was the greatest thing he's ever accomplished. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. 
I don't yeah, know if I've been rocking with the Cavs though. 20, I've seen every 2012 Braun's good. 2019, 2018 Braun is good too though. I've literally watched every game of every game of them for the last like two, three seasons. Two, three seasons. I watched the Cavs. Oh, OD. I OD. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Lee Pass. I I watch a lot of teams. He's literally teams. lying though. Max, when are we gonna why do we let him get away with stuff like this, bro? Yeah, see, like that's my it's like I don't even worry, like I don't care about it anymore because like if you run through the <sighs> favorite team, no, no, no. It's like I have it's it's you, I guess. It's like the pisses the pisses are new. The pisses are new. I, I picked them up this summer. On, I picked them up this summer. We literally That's just facts. talked about this. We literally just talked about this. It's just very, very weird. Like you see the memes where people are like, Oh, I'm a I'm a Warriors fan, I'm a Yankees fan, I'm a Cowboys fan, I'm an Alabama basket, I'm an Alabama football, Kentucky basketball fan. You have two of those boxes checked off in Alabama and Kentucky, and I'd say even more than being a Warriors fan or a um, Cowboys fan, the easiest fans to be in those two sports is a LeBron James fan and a Pat Mahomes fan. And you don't care about baseball. So, like, you kind of just said, like, let me take the best in each sport. Um, and I think so. Like I said, I have justified reasons for a lot of it. So as far as like I was, you know, I was an Aaron Rodgers fan um, before I was yeah. a Patrick Mahomes fan, right? Uh, he wasn't the best in his sport. He was Second. not. Um, uh, he, well, probably, he, probably of, of, he was, of like he was yeah, top he was three. He was top three. Year out. Him, Peyton, uh, and Tom. Uh, Peyton. Well, while Peyton was here, he was better than Aaron Rodgers. But uh, well, not. I mean, as far as talent, now. Nah. But anyways, yes, that's yes, he was better than Aaron Rodgers for those years. He was better yes, than Aaron Rodgers. Yes, he those was. last couple of years, no. But yes, okay, yes. So I, it was like it was like he was the best. Um, and I'm from Chicago as well, so it's not like I'm, you know, what I'm saying like I had to be an Aaron Rodgers fan. I really love, like, really just love Aaron Rodgers. And so when Patrick Mahomes came in the league, he reminded me so much of Aaron Rodgers. That's why I, be, I became a fan before he even won a Super Bowl and nothing like that. So I, don't, I mean, he obviously won MVP his first year starting. So people gonna feel like I'm a bandwagon. But as far as Alabama, I've explained it uh, so many times. So um, this is the first time you've explained to me. So that's why. Well, to you, I explained it. I had to explain it every day in the Discord, like almost all the time. My he said he said his sister went to Alabama, so he he went she to did. some games. I did, literally did. I didn't say you didn't, but it's just like I'm a, my I, brother. Growing went to up, St. my brother went to St. John's. I went to some games. Well, they suck. So I don't know. I don't know why would you be a fan of them? They they stink. Um. So, anyways, um. Yeah. Well, LeBron is LeBron. I mean, I mean. I get it. I'm a LeBron fan, but I was yeah. a K- I was a KD fan too. I was a KD fan. I was a Russ fan, but you know, KD is a snake, and Russ is just you know Russ. No, Russ. First off, <laughs> you're such a traitor because Russ Russ used to be your home screen actually. Um, yep, your your home screen yeah. and my screen, and then just like you, you yeah. just stop. You, you just That's my boy. He, he fell off, and I he <laughs> fell off, and I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't He's go with him. Bro. <laughs> He's a groupie, bro. He goes to the he goes he, to the hottest he, team. Let's runs, runs, runs in the struggle. Let's see runs. In bro, the struggle. bro fell off, and I was not ready. I was not prepared for. To go, to go with him. I don't know how Jaden Jaden hanging on um Derrick Rose for sure. I don't know how you did that, but anyways, we can move on. Bro. <laughs> All right, man. so I think that oh, that, it's because Russ like Russ just declined like in his career. Derrick Rose, Derrick Rose fans just say, oh, it's because of the injury. No one's really gonna say that wrong. You could say it's because of the injury, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Russ didn't get injured. He just kind of like played, just dropped off a little bit. He's still like, I think effective. But if he was uh, that skill. If he was actually like that skill, he would probably would still be decent. But he, he rose. So yeah, yeah. You know, he was he relied on his athleticism a lot. He was like really skilled. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I just got a weird text message, bro. Anyway. <laughs> Lock in. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, let's get into the Lions and um, Cowboys controversy. I think I didn't even watch this game. I'll be totally honest, but I think this was a, like with some type of two point conversion or something. Uh, let let me know. I didn't see this game. It was it was a two point conversion where the Lions converted it, but they called it uh, illegal formation or illegal uh, ineligible uh, receiver downfield or something like that. So yeah, it was Taylor Decker. Caught the two point conversion, and then they said legal man downfield. But there's the video footage of Taylor Decker, someone else, and number seventy all going to the ref, basically saying like Taylor Decker went to the ref. Why would he go to the ref if he wasn't declaring himself as an eligible receiver? So my big takeaway from this game is that sure the Cowboys come away with a one, but they did not win this game. Like in my opinion, like they didn't outplay the Lions. The Lions make that two point conversion. It's over. And, like, we're looking at this in a different light. It's obviously the ref's fault. 
and I think they've been punished, right? They're like out of the playoffs, which is good. I think punishing, if you punish players for saying stuff about the refs, I think it's good when the refs are wrong, you punish them and whatever. They can get back next season. Cool. But like, I didn't think Detroit was going to win this game or I didn't think they were going to put up, put up a fight and they did. And I think it sucks because if they make that two point conversion, the narrative is completely different. I get the Eagles control their own destiny and they still lost. So now it's a race to see who wins that division. But I think the lines are looked at as a much, much different team and a bigger threat if they go beat Dallas in Dallas. So my question to both of you guys, who is the number two team or I guess Latif, if you want to say it, the biggest threat to San Fran in the NFC? Um, despite all of Philly's struggles, like all of Philly's struggles with the offense, the defense being terrible, um, Jalen Hurts not playing like he did last year and all that stuff, I still feel more confident in the Eagles than any other team in the NFC outside of San Francisco. Um, I think they're built a little better than the uh, the Lions. Um, the Cowboys haven't really, you know, the only good team they beat is the Eagles. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of close between the Eagles, Cowboys, and Lions, but I just have more faith in them. Despite all the stuff that happened this year, I have more faith in the Eagles uh, to go farther in the playoffs. I still think it's going to be Eagles 49ers um, uh, NFC championship game. It just really depends on who runs into who. Like, if the Cowboys run into the 49ers in the second round, then they're going to lose. And, and whoever sees the 49ers first is going to lose. Just basically, that's that's what it is. Um, I still think, that, like, you could make the case that the Cowboys have a better defense, but their offense is just Dak and, and CD. It's, it honestly just is. Um, I think the Eagles can beat you still in so many ways. If They just have to, you know, lock in. Like, they can still beat you on the ground. They can still beat you through the air. Uh, the defense can still get get to the passer. It's just that secondary is god awful. But I still think the Eagles are the second best team in the NFC. And I guess you could make a case for the Cowboys. Um, but the Lions are frauds, honestly. They, like they, we can't forget that stretch they had where they were losing to terrible teams. I don't trust uh, Jared Goff at all in an unperfect scenario. Like if he has to lead a team back from a, a deficit. I don't trust him at all. Um, if he is not getting protected well, I don't trust him at all. He's a statue in the pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and trust Dak Prescott and um, Jalen Hurts a little more than I do Jared Goff. So it's, it's honestly between the Cowboys and the Eagles. But I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with the Eagles, honestly. That's my second best team in the NFC. Jaden, uh, who's your second best team in the NFC? Bro, I did don't know. You don't know? I don't know, bro. Why don't you know? I do not know. Hold on, let me look. Their records are pretty much similar. I think right now the uh, are the Eagles are eleven and five, right? Eagles are eleven and five. Um, I think the the Lions might be eleven and five too. And I'm gonna say I think they all have the same record. And I don't, I don't think the records gonna really really tell the whole story either. The Eagles are just a confusing team to me, especially this year, bro. And then, like, I thought Jalen Hurts was was this like, would you would you consider him a top seven guy still? No. Yeah, it's just like I don't know, bro. It's like what I saw in the Super Bowl, bro. That like legit moved me. And then, um, I see like I saw something on Twitter. I don't know who said it, but I think he said like Kyle Murray, Kyler Murray over um over Jalen Hurts. Is is that something you guys believe? I think like, Kyler Hurts. I think Kyler Murray is a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. I think his situation is nowhere near as good as him, so we haven't seen it. He's been injured. But talent for talent, yes, give me Kyler, uh, give me Kyler Murray. I think Jalen Hurts was more so – he wasn't a one-year wonder, but the season that they had against a terrible – well, not a terrible – they had a weak schedule last last season. Um, and you can really see this season that Shane Steichen was – he worked wonders for Jalen Hurts. He worked wonders for the Eagles offense. He had a lot of stuff. That was like easy bubble plays to get the offense moving. It was a lot more uh, read options. So I'm not calling like Jalen Hurts a top seven guy. He has to rely so much on a offensive coordinator when other quarterbacks don't have to do that. So I think we, I think the general consensus in the internet was Jalen Hurts was a top five guy. 
I saw people putting him at like top three. He's not that. He's not better than Lamar Jackson. He would. He never was. Jalen Hurts has a Jalen Hurts last year had that perfect scenario. He performed well in that perfect scenario. But we got to start taking more than one year sample sizes and propping these guys up because they're they're like they're just not that. And I think situations matter so much in quarterback play. We see that this year. So when you take away his offensive coordinator, how, how does he look? When the offense isn't moving uh, great. How does he look? Like, can he elevate? Like, he's turned the ball. He turned the ball over so much more than what he did uh, last year. So, I don't have uh, Jalen Hurts as the top seven guy. I would take, um, honestly, I would take Mahomes, obviously Allen, Lamar. Uh, I would take Herbert. We that's four. Uh, who else I'm missing? I would take Aaron Rodgers over him. That's five. Uh, healthy. Um, I would take Matthew Stafford over him. I would take Kyle Murray over him. Um, I would take that Prescott over him, honestly. Um, yeah. that, that, I feel like I'm missing people, too. Really feel like I'm missing people. Um, I'll probably take him over Trevor Lawrence. Um, I would take I might take C.A.'s trial over Jalen Hurts, if you're being for real, for real, uh, because of what he's done in the situation that he has. Um, C.J. situation matters. Lawrence, man. And C.J. Stroud might be better than Hurts. Uh, if, realistically, he might be better than him. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. Bro. Remember when I said something about CJ Stroud and I was just getting so much hate for it, bro? I guess actually you did. You did. That's, you did. that's, that's actually gonna come into fruition, bro. So um I want my flowers for that, actually, but you know, just take it with time. But the, the Lions, the Cowboys, and the Eagles are eleven and five. I, I did, didn't know that. I'm not gonna lie, did not know that at all. You know, but yeah, a, a, broken, still, a, a broken clock is right. Uh about, about, about yeah, shut up. <laughs> Unfunny. So, anyways. <laughs> I, t- still, to answer your question, I, I I don't know, bro. Honestly, don't know. Who's your Who's your second best team? Who, give me your second best team and your biggest threat to to the Forty uh, ers and the NFC Max. I, I gotta say, it's probably Philly too. Um, just for the simple fact that, like, I, I get Dallas just beat Philly. Um, I don't think Detroit's beating Philly. Philly was just in the Super Bowl last year. Like, at the end of the day, they do the personnel. I think I trust them the most just because they've been there before. I get their defense is different, but like, I, I don't think I don't think there's many threats. Um, I still probably take San Fran over yeah, anybody in the NFC. Um, but yeah, I think Philly will put up the best fight. We'll see. Alrighty, um, that moves on. That moves us on to the next topic. Uh... Yep. Okay. Bear is securing the number one pick. Um, you know, there's always been a lot of talks about the quarterback situation when it comes down to the Bears. And now that we have the number one pick, um, especially in the, the game yesterday, uh, I think they were saying we want fields. They were they were chanting that. Um, I don't know. I kind of have mixed emotions about this. Uh, Max, first, I want to I want to hear about what you what you want to say. Um. Um beyond confused with everything right now um there are so many different directions you can go with this and i still think i will stay with the idea that we keep fields um the more i keep seeing about caleb williams does he want to be with with the bears does he have personnel issues whatever i don't really care about all that stuff if he doesn't want like if if he does not want to play with the chicago bears like and especially this day age you can't force him to like just drafting him is not going to work out for you guys just because you drafted him does not mean he's going to do something you can hold out you can do whatever i don't think he's shut down the idea of going back to college especially with you can make your money back there too so i really see um especially with what fields has done i think he's got the fans he's got the players um he's got whether he's played at your elite level or not like the players like him the players want him to be there and that's like you're why would you bring in caleb if the entire team doesn't want him there type thing like, I don't know, but my big thing is I still don't think that you have to draft one. You want, let's say, let's say that they keep fields, right? You're obviously going to go with Marv. You're going to pick Marv. Two, I think, is Washington. Three is New England, right? Still, that's the draft order because Arizona well, won. The Cardinals. They won, so now I think they're fourth, I believe. They are fourth. They are fourth. I was just, I was just looking at it. They're oh. fourth. They're your only threat to take Marv. They're the only threat to take Marv. So if you can do something where you can get Marv, but you can trade down with the commanders or trade down with the Patriots 
and try and then capitalize on value, right? Let's say you trade out with the commanders. You're with the commanders. You say that the Patriots want to trade up. Like, what do you want to give up for Caleb? Who supposedly the commanders love Caleb, like over the moon about Caleb, want Caleb so much. So if they go for Caleb. What, like, you can get next year's first. You can get this Honestly, year's first. You can get a pick. Like, I'm saying you can keep capitalizing on value and keep building up with those rookie contracts. So uh, I get it. Like, at the end of the day, if we do get Caleb, I don't even think I'll be that mad. I'm just kind of like torn on both ways, but I think it, keep getting those future assets and getting star players would be huge. You got Montez. If you can get a Max Crosby, amazing. If you can still draft Marv, like there's a lot of different options they can go with. I'm not going to lie. I feel like personally, if you want to get Marvin, you just take him. Just take him. Yeah. Honestly, I was he's, a, he's, a, he's a generational prospect. Just take him because I'm looking at this draft order, right? They got one, but Washington is why? Why? If I'm in Washington, I know you want to keep Justin Fields. Why am I taking you? Why am I trading up with you for what? And I'm at two right now. I'm sitting pretty. I, I'm a Drake May guy. I'll just take Drake May. Why, why am I trading up when Washington doesn't want to take Drake May? They want Caleb, they want Caleb, right? But Unless the, the 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 Bears are going to trade down, that you're not getting Marvin. Like I think the direct. So I uh, personally think they should. I no, personally, not because, I, what if you call New England? Neither of them are picking Marv. What if you call New England? Okay, New England, you want to trade up now? Now they don't care no, how they're stuck with Drake no. May. You might love Drake May. They might not. They might want Marv, or they might might want Caleb. Trust me, they, trading up they one might, still has they value. Might, they might, but like, listen, though, like I, honestly, for me, I'm gonna, the GM of these teams. Why am I moving up? I don't unless like I'm not I'm not moving up. I, I'm not like for New England. I'm either getting Caleb or Drake, and Drake is amazing. I'm I like I don't think there's this so a huge gap between these quarterbacks. Uh, first of all, That's Drake made six different organizations it, differently. They might, but I'm telling you what I would do. This is all we can do. We can really well. We can't really assume what other organizations. Are. We're not GMs. Like I, I personally wouldn't. I'm I'm not trading up. I'm gonna watch. I'm not trading up. I'm New England. I'm not. Um, Arizona is not drafting a quarterback. I'm not trading up. So if you're the teams are going to be trading up are teams that need quarterbacks and like maybe like uh, Las Vegas. That's a big jump. Like unless unless like you're getting a, a huge haul and then you're not taking Marvin and you're taking another receiver like Malik Neighbors. You're, you're fine with Malik Neighbors. It just depends on like obviously you can still get Marvin. You you get Marvin, but it might be the case that teams might not be trading up because they're fine with Drake May and they just might you might have to just take Marvin at one. But that's you might, the issue. Cause, if if let's say let's say um let's say I don't know Vegas Vegas wants a quarterback they trade up cool they get more they get Caleb Commanders take Drake May the Patriots get nobody there is okay. still a, I'm saying there's still a world where those two teams yes. they want to take their guy you want to trade up and take yes. their guy you, you trade to two to one and two to three or three to one is less than trading from eight to one or seven to one so yes it's a pretty price it's a good price to pay. But if you're giving up one first, if you're giving up your first this year, your first next year, and a player, I don't know they're gonna. I don't know they're gonna do that for two spots. I don't know about that for two spots. But it, Caleb Caleb Williams is this generational prospect. Everyone's Caleb Williams. Trading up one pick by giving your first round next year is not that big of a price to pay. You said a first and a player. Um, it depends yeah, on who the player is. Be an all star player, all caliber player. You okay, so yeah. I mean, I get you saying you can't trade the pick, but I just hope that if they do trade the pick, they, they are still able to get Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm not a Bears or anything, but obviously I want the you know city to see and all that. I want to see people in the city happy and you know praise people in the championships and all that. You need to get Marvin Harrison. You need to do that because Marvin Harrison is not only friends with Justin Fields because of uh, Ohio State. I just saw a tweet that uh, he said, "What's what's the name?" DJ Moore said they grew up together. So just just for the, the chemistry and all that, you need you need to get Marvin Harrison Jr. Like Malik Neighbors is a great prospect, but this is a generational prospect. You need to get Marvin Harrison Jr. So we don't have to we can we can debate all day about if this trade a pick or not, but the Bears need to walk out of this draft with either Caleb Williams or 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 um uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Now I think what I would do and what the Bears are gonna do are two different things, but I personally think they should take Caleb Williams. Um I don't think we've seen enough from, from Justin Fields over the course of his career. I have not, we have not seen enough over the course of over Justin Fields' career to 
justify passing up on a generational prospect. We have not seen it. Over the course of this season, after he got injured, he's been playing well. But I, he hasn't played any crazy defenses. Like, Atlanta is – I think they're in a top six scoring defense, but they're in the worst conference in the, in the NFL. So, like, how, how much am I putting stock in that? And they're not, like, a really, really great defense in my opinion. Like, I still think he's struggling with certain stuff he struggled with in his rookie year. And you don't want to see that from a third-year quarterback. Usually you know if a quarterback is your guy by year three. And I don't think they're 100% sure – that Justin Fields is their guy. The fans want him. I don't know how Ryan Poles and them feel like most GMs want to get their guy. He didn't draft him. And so you have to be really, really, really sure that Justin Fields is your guy in order to justify passing up on the best prospect we've seen since Trevor Lawrence and rivaling Trevor Lawrence as a prospect. So are you completely sure like that Justin Fields is your guy? I don't know if you are. He still struggles with Throwing across the middle of the field, he still struggled with missing um, players, reading the field. Um, he's, his footwork he still needs um, some some work. Like, yes, I think both. I think both of them are good options, though. Like, if you can, I'm not gonna lie. You need to get Marvin. That's all I know. That you, like, you just I need to get Marvin. I, don't, I get it because uh, Darnell Dar- Mooney is not it at all. I 100 understand that. Like, Caleb has a higher like is projected to be higher, but like, there's no guarantees with Caleb either. Like, that's just got to get. I mean, duh. Way. I mean, it's not. It's, it's not a. We gotta stop any, talking about not, it like it's a surefire pick. We pick him; it's gonna be great forever. We're still the Bears. We still have a tough time developing quarterbacks. How? Yeah. How? how yeah. I mean, how? How much more surefire can you get? How much more surefire in, a, in, a, in the NFL draft? How much more surefire? Are you, you just surefire said him and Drake May are like one A, one B. No, it was, I didn't say that. I said it's not a huge gap. The Bears can. Gap. The, the Bears. But if you are not worried about trading up and getting your guy, you definitely think they're on the same level. What do you mean? You just said it doesn't matter. They're not. They're fine. They're fine to sit back. I think. I think. I think. Drake, sit back and take Drake May. You have to have them on a similar, same level. I'm, I'm. I'm pretty, pretty confident in Drake May too. I think he's gonna be one of the ones. I'm not gonna lie. I think there's a chance he's better than Caleb. I, I agree with. I agree with Max. And also to that Drake May thing, I'm hearing that a lot too. Like my brother, he doesn't want Caleb Williams. He wants Drake May. But the thing with the Bears is we can't develop. We can't develop quarterbacks, and that's what I said earlier this year when um when Justin Fields was looking like a disaster class. Even if we do get Caleb Williams, it's a chance that we ruin Caleb Williams. So now the thing with this Justin Fields thing, he's won the locker room. Obviously, he's won over the fans. Uh, but the thing is, bro, how many times are we going to look at Justin Fields at the end of the season and be like, oh, yeah, this, this is the guy. And then at the beginning of the season, he looks terrible. He looks like he's reverted back to the old Justin Fields with all these mistakes where he can't read the field. He doesn't go through his progressions, all that type of stuff. So this is where I get frustrated at. So now you have some generation. You have a generational guy in Caleb Williams. Again, uh, Max, you say that for for Latif, I guess he's your one one A one B type thing. You have these two guys, and now you're you're tasked with the position of picking them over Justin Fields or getting another weapon uh, with Justin Fields. So now, me personally, I think you have to go with Caleb Williams. I understand where you're saying uh, get Marvin Harrison. Again, the TV said that Darnell, Darnell Mooney is not the guy. Uh, we've seen what he's done. We've seen what Justin Fields has done with DJ Moore, especially as of late. So I guess I don't know, bro. But me personally, I'm taking Caleb Williams. But I don't know, man. I honestly don't. I don't know. When we talk about surefire guys, like who? No one in the NFL is surefire unless like Peyton Manning was a surefire prospect. Like you knew Peyton. You knew Peyton Manning was going to be elite. Like you literally knew. You knew Angelo was going to be elite. Like. People knew Trevor Lawrence like was going to be elite, and he he is like after this first year he's he kind of been that so or we're close to it. So it's like you never know, but like let's be realistic, bro. Let's be realistic. Caleb Williams' ceiling is just way higher. It's just it simply just is like Caleb Williams could be a top five quarterback in the league right now. On God, Jordan Love is better than, than Justin Fields. I <laughs> promise you he is. I promise you he is. So, how sure I we, we you draft Marvin Harrison, right? Get him another weapon, a great weapon, a generational weapon. Like, what is his ceiling? Like, what, what Max answered this? What is his ceiling? Like, who do we think he's going to be? Just a few. because, yes. What is his ceiling? Like top ten? Because we we talking about a ceiling yeah. of, of top five MVP level Caleb Williams right now. We are talking about a that's great, but we're not guaranteeing he's getting there. Like, I don't think you understand the you're amount. Not guarantee of- that you're not guaranteed to get there. You're not guaranteed to get there with, with drafting Marvin Harrison because cool. so like, is it better to oh. who is who is which, which one is which one is the bigger risk? Which one is the bigger risk? Out of what? 
Is it more risky to draft a generational prospect with five years? You get five years with a generational prospect who is worth less money. He's going to be cheaper than Justin Fields. Or is it riskier to bank on Justin Fields after watching him for three years and not show completely that he's going to be a better player than Caleb Williams? Which is one is better, riskier? Is it better to bank on having two elite receiving options, a questionable quarterback, and building out your defense, building out your O-line, or – getting your quarterback, getting Caleb Williams in the future, having DJ Moore, and not building out other Nothing stuff. Else. You could they capitalize. Have another, they, have, they, have another pick. they have another pick. They have another pick. That's they great. Can get, they That's can get awesome. Malik Neighbors. So they cool. can get Malik Neighbors. You can Malik get Neighbors. two picks. You can get players. You can get so many things off that. And first of all, I get it. Depends it. On how, how, how much they move down. Huh? It depends on how much they move down. It depends on how you much they move down. First. I, they get another first. They have another pick. They have picks. They have money. They have all that. You could call you can, a team and you can get, especially if you trade down, down, and maybe you don't get Marv. Maybe you get Malik Neighbors. That's fine. I get it. Marv is much better. But if you trade down with a team who is 10, where you're jumping, where you're jumping the commanders, where you're jumping the Patriots, you can capitalize on that. You get a first, you get a second, you get a player, you get a first next year. Like you get so much more because you're jumping so much. Like they could capitalize so much more. I get it. Again, if you go with Caleb. I'm going to sit and I'm still going to be a fan. Like I have no choice, but right now, like if it's two question marks at quarterback where they both have high ceilings, sure. Caleb's is higher. That's fine. I'm not going to fight you on that right now. I would rather have a, a, a chance to build out a team like San Fran where they have elite weapons. You build out the O line, you get a great defense, like, and you put a Brock Purdy, a game manager, someone who can make the right passes and stuff at quarterback. Like that, we haven't seen we haven't seen Justin Fields make, be able to make the right passes consistently though. Like honestly, he has not. That's like, fine. This is his first year. I feel like he's actually been playing at like a good level. He's been having good games. He's been playing solid. Against Started who? Bad, against who? Won five against home who? Games in a row. Like against who though? Like what defense has, has he been playing? What defense has he? What defense has he been playing that he's been playing great against? Tell me. Give me one. He did not play. He did not play against the Vikings. He did not. Against the Browns, okay. he did not play great. Give me one. Give me what one. Did, what did what did da- what did Dak Prescott do against the Lions? What, what has that? What's the difference? Got him up twice. Seen, we've seen we seen good uh, great defense. Come on, bro. I don't know what kind of comparison that was. Justin Fields dotted up the Lions defense twice. Dak Prescott could not. They honestly lost that game. The Lions right. defense. The Lions defense is not good. Be for real, right now. The Lions okay, defense so is not why good. Why couldn't Dak Prescott light him up? Dak Prescott is a top ten quarterback right now. What does that mean? I'm asking I'm you. Kidding. I'm asking you. What defense has Justin Fields played great against? Please. What good defense has he played great against, or even good? What? what which one? Give me one, please. 2017 almost beat the Browns. What are you talking about? 2017. No, 20 to 17 game. We almost beat the Browns. He did not play. Good. He did not play great in that game. He, I, that Justin Fields, he he was okay. Like yeah, really, like he's the top defense in the league. He was okay. He was okay. You gave him a like, chance to win for sure. You gave him a chance well, to run. I'm not taking away first from that. First of all, first of all, first of all, what good defense have we played this year as a whole? Wins or losses? Y'all played the Chiefs. Y'all, y'all played the Chiefs because the yep. Chiefs are a good defense and got smoked. Oh. And he played terrible. Okay. What other good defense have we played? Let me go look. Let me go look at the schedule. Y'all, I they, think they, they, there's they two. Terrible. There's two. Let me look. And, and even, if, even if it's only been two, there's it, two. It, 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 even if there's only been two, that would mean Justin Fields would, should have played much better than he has. Yes, he's, he's been like, bad in the first part of the year. No one's saying he didn't, but he's gotten much better over the how years. Do you, how do you play against the Panthers? One. How do you play against the Saints? Did he, even, did he play that game? I don't think he played in the game. No, it was Tyson Bagnett. My nope. bad. How do you play my against bad, the Saints? My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. He didn't play against the he Panthers didn't, either. He didn't play against the Saints either. He was, that's when he was injured. He didn't play against the Panthers or the Saints. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So he had a he he had a field day. Well, not well. Yeah, he was he was good against he was good against the Lions. He was good against the Lions. He had a hundred yards rushing and a hundred yards passing. That was that was a good game. Great game for him. Like the Vikings game is just terrible. I'm not going to fight that. He beats that's the Lions. That's a good defense. That's a good defense. The Vikes. The Vikings are, are a good defense. Yes. See, like, the big thing. Ryan, the issue for me is Ryan playing Flores, good or playing, play, playing good or playing bad. Winning that game against the Vikings and if we could have beat the Browns is huge because even when he plays bad, he makes the right throws to win a game. That's what I wanted to see. That's what I did how not much, see. How much? Year. How much? How do you play against the Packers in the, in the beginning of the year? Trash. He played trash. You're just taking play? everything out how? of what I'm saying. I said he played bad at the start of the year. No one's saying that. He's gotten much better the season went on. You're like he has. 
He has, but like, I'm not impressed. Are you? I'm not impressed enough to, to draft Caleb as far as he, I'm just not impressed with the competition enough. I'm not impressed with his play enough. He's played. He well, played good. The NFL for giving us a shitty schedule. He, then he's that's he what played, we got. He played. He played good against the Bears. He played good against the Lions twice. He's not playing against the Vikings. He's not playing against against Browns. And he played against. Uh, he played good against a Cardinals defense that is terrible. God awful. Who beat, who beat Philly and who also beat Dallas, by the way. They they, they left thirty one points. That, that has nothing to do with the. Uh, beat Philly and also beat Dallas, by the way. They they they, they let up thirty one points. Like, what are you talking about? Um. And he played against against the Falcons, who are terrible. So it's like I I, I don't know, bro. Like but he hasn't has, done enough. So he hasn't don't done, get I'm like this is where it's like. I want to see, see it. it. I want to see it on a more consistent basis against good defenses. I do. So tell the NFL to schedule us the hardest schedule next year. I can't fight him this they year. Might give for a, saying, they for might playing get... who he played. He played who he played. That's it. We got. He has looked. Against. He has looked good since he came back. We were one. We we're like one drive away in three games from winning. We could have won three games. With Blue he has League. played good since he came back, Max. But we have to add context. We have to. You can't just say that's. that's you you can't just say tell the NFL get him a hard schedule because you have to see some evidence. He's playing for his job. So if I'm going to add context, right? He hasn't played playing against great against uh against great defenses, and he hasn't played spectacular enough where I feel comfortable taking him over Caleb Williams. This is what we're talking about right now. Are you just saying he's playing good against bad defenses? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying he hasn't played spectacular enough. Like he hasn't played out of this world enough over this course. Where I am comfortable taking him against Caleb Williams because the reality is he was playing for his job this season. He was playing for his job this season, and if you want to, so you got to give him a, a grade on the year. Uh, and we're talking about him playing against a job. What 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 grade would you give him? What grade would you uh, give? Him? B minus C plus. And you, a B minus C plus is enough for you to, to pass on Caleb Williams, and that's not enough for me. It's not when for the hold on, when for the first five weeks of the season it was an F. Yes. He's been playing at a B plus A minus level the past. Like Jaden said, like Jaden said, and he had, he had not illustrated this point enough. We seen this last year. We saw it. We saw him have a great stretch to end of the year. And what did he do next season? He played trash. So it's a lot more than just you know getting players. You need a new office coordinator, a way better one. You kind you honestly need a new head coach, and they're not going to do that either. So we saw we we saw. Justin Fields has one more year left and you, until you have to pay him. So are you giving him a – whatever is it, like the, the figure option? Are you picking it up? Do you really want to give him that? Because has he shown enough? Really? No. So it's way cheaper to just drive Caleb Williams from a from an organizational standpoint. And you have money to go out there and get those players that you need. This is where – It's way cheaper. It's way is, cheaper. That's fine, though, but you're starting from square one again. You're not. You're not starting you from square are. one. You're not, you're not starting from why. square one. That's a lot. You're not starting from square one. You're not starting from square one. You start from okay. square. You start from square one with a quarterback, yes. But as far as the whole team, you're not starting from. You're not starting from square one at all. But you're the not. team doesn't want Caleb. The team wants Justin Fields. How is it? Gonna That's a good point. I guess playing for a quarterback who doesn't want to play for the Bears and players who don't want to play for that quarterback. How is that going to work, bro? We 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 seen right now. We are in. We are in December. That could, when the, when the draft happens, they have a whole offseason for that to change for them to, for them to get chemistry and the bond and all that. Honestly, those players have to come there and do their job because they're getting paid millions of dollars. Who like who you want to play for and all that stuff? Cool, you need locker room kind of gruity, but you you just count that out and saying that, that Caleb can't build that over the course of off season is kind of crazy. And the core of the training camp is kind of crazy. Like Maybe. obviously, they, they I, I, want I've a guy, but Caleb come on, want to play for the Bears. How does that work if Caleb's want to play for the team? Has he said that? He's like tweets about it. He said oh. both times he's fine coming back. Like. It, that knowing the Bears have had the first pick the entire year and saying, "Oh, I'm cool to come." Like, if you want to play for Chicago, you're saying, "I want to be here. I'm going to the draft. I'm doing all this stuff." It's obvious the Bears are going to have the first pick. It was obvious the entire year. So, it, it, like, doing that and saying, "Oh, you know, I don't, I don't really know. I, why are you trying to play hard to get? Like, if you want, just want to do it now, just do it. Like, enter the draft and go. Like, he didn't play in the bowl game. I get it. So, like, maybe that's saying he's going to enter the draft. Fine, but like. Like, there's been no sort of, like, again, if it's, like, whoever, I guess the Pistons could turn it around. But the number one overall draft pick, if there was a clear-cut Wemby this year, he's got to know he's going to Detroit. Or he's has a great chance to go to Detroit. Like, you got to show, if you want to go there, show interest and be like, yeah, you know, like, I'm I'm ready to finish my last year in college. Like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to 
um, whatever, go to the league, like make it known that you're entering the draft and you want to be part of whatever organization has won. Like if the bears want Caleb and Caleb wants to go to the bears. Sure. That's great. But like, it doesn't seem like that from both sides. Okay. We, we can talk about it all day. We, you know, I'll, I'll agree to disagree. Um, I think, but I want to make it clear. I think that both are great. Uh, both are good options. Like I both agree. of these options are good, and they can work in the interest the, the interest of the Bears. Like I think, but there is there is a right and wrong choice, and I don't know it. I just hope the Bears make the right one. I think one is, will, I don't know. I don't one know how many times out, one will not. So I'm I don't just, know how, what other uh how how many how many quarterbacks in NFL history have worked at the year three when we see we, how many. I don't know quarterbacks who've worked after year one. If I'm thinking about it, I can't think of the top of my head. What do you mean? Like people have had a bad rookie season and bounced back a lot. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm just talking saying about? I can't think of it off the top of my head. I don't know Pat Mahomes, Trevor like Lawrence, three. Peyton Manning, Pat year three. Huh? Pat Mahomes like year three or something after sitting on the bench. No, no, he did not. He is in his second year in the league. He is first year starting. Like, Jordan loves like year five or four or something. Yeah, he's set and look at him better than Justin Fields, 30, 30 and eleven. So, in a year, not even over. So you you know you know after year three yeah you you know what you're, you're getting to catch me next week. I don't think any I don't think anyone I don't think anyone has worked out the year three. I don't I don't even know if it's, it's ever happened. I don't not from like like the, Josh Allen was the closest because after year two wasn't good. But year yeah, three that is a lie. That is a lie. Josh Allen, Jalen. No, Hurt. he, he Josh, Josh Allen. Allen Josh Allen, no, he's not. In year three, he went 37 and 10. This is yes, year, this, this is their year three. This is the year that they yes, all went on. This, yes. this Jalen, this Justin Fields, we it's three years in. We're not sure about him. You're not completely sure. That's what I'm saying. Josh yeah. Allen was 37 and 10 in year three. Uh in year three for Jalen Hurts, he went to Super Bowl and played amazing. So this, you know after year three. And you do not know what Justin Fields after year three. You don't. You usually know what a guy is by year three. Are you better go fact check me and I'm right. I'm not fat you. Sorry, I'm making a bet right now. Okay. Anyways, um, we can move on. The Ravens beat the Dolphins 56 and 19. It was a horror show. Uh, after it was like 45 to like uh, I think it was 14 or something like that. I turned it off. It was it was getting dark. Um, Max, I want to ask you this. Um What would a second what would a second MVP do for Lamar Jackson's career? Like I, was, I saw something where it guarantees him a spot in Ken. Because there are very few teams who are very few players who have got two MVPs under their belt. Um, which I agree. Um, I think he's very, very close to cementing himself as all time great in Baltimore. Um, one of the best dual threat quarterbacks of all time, one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Obviously not top five, top ten, but like at the new age for sure. The big thing is still that Super Bowl hump. Like, if he gets that Super Bowl ring, I think we talk about him in a whole new light. He's easily top two, top three, um, and probably not three. Um, he's probably next up after Mahomes. And if he wins another one, you have some people trying to have a different conversation. So I think him getting another MVP, um, for him especially, I think it's huge. Um, he was a free agent at this point this er, this summer. A lot of teams didn't want him. Um, the Ravens even didn't want him at one point in time. So for him to go – out this year, ball out, great defense, weapons go down. You get Zay Flowers, but Mark Andrews is down um, and still play at an MVP level, dominate two teams people thought were top contenders um, is great. I have been on this train since the start of the year. I hope they win. Um, I like the Ravens a lot. I like Lamar. I love their defense. Um, yeah, I think they're looked at as the new powerhouses um, with a lockdown defense. Maybe you get another weapon, but besides that, like, their favorites for years to come. So I think him getting this other MVP is cool, but a lot of it rides on you got to get some, you got to get a Super Bowl. Like you got to at least make it um, compete, beat Mahomes, beat Burrow, beat someone. Like you got to compete at a high level for like the next two, three years. You can't, and they've had injuries in the years past. So I get that. Lamar's gone down. They've had major injuries, but still, like I need to see some postseason success. Yeah, I agree with the, about the postseason success. But honestly, with this second MVP, I think it puts him in conversation with, with Josh Allen. Like, it definitely does. Um, I think two? Lamar, yeah, for two. I think Lamar is, is one of the most uh, underrated players in the NFL. Honestly, I don't think enough appreciation is given to Lamar for what he's done without great weapons and without. Um, a, he has, he's had a great rushing attack, 
but a lot a lot of that has to do with him. And um, he hasn't had a great OC since he came into the league. And a lot of his players get injured a lot. Like Ravens are one of the most unlucky luck, unluckiest teams. And if Lamar is healthy, they win it. They they win the AFC North. And we we saw that this year. If Lamar Jackson wins the Super Bowl, he's definitely the second best quarterback in the NFL. It's it's I will put him over Josh Allen just because of what he's been able to do without elite weapons. And I think Josh Allen is a great quarterback. It'll be a conversation, but I'm going to just, I'm just give it to Lamar, especially with a second MVP, because no other quarterback in that top echelon has won a Super Bowl besides uh, Patrick Mahomes. So getting getting one puts you at two. It definitely does. Um, I think Lamar Jackson is better than Joe Burrow. Uh, I think Lamar Jackson is better than um, Justin Herbert because what he he's he what he's able to do with the talent around him is is amazing. He is their entire offense. He is um, he's amazing. I, I'm, I'm glad people are seeing that, especially because all the stuff he got, all the flack he got in the in the off season with, with people saying his mom shouldn't be his agent. Uh, he shouldn't be asking for guaranteed money. I know his mom is his agent. Yeah, she is. And, and and people were talking crazy. Teams are doing like weird stuff. And so for him to come back this year and have an NFP, MVP type season, it's it's a it's a great end to a story. Um, honestly. And and everybody else that got paid this year did not live up to it. Justin Herbert got injured and he wasn't playing that great before he got uh injured anyways. And Justin Fields, I mean Justin Hurts, we having an entirely different conversation about him. So people were uh, I like Stephen A were saying Stephen like Stephen A was talking crazy about him like a few weeks ago, uh well, like early in the season talking about some he hasn't lived up to his contract and all that. Uh, before he signed the contract, they were saying trade him. And so it's nice to see Lamar Jackson come back and have an MVP type season, prove all the diet that was wrong. And I think with MVP and uh, a deep playoff run, he don't got to win a Super Bowl. A deep playoff run, because Josh Allen playoff resume isn't that great either. Uh so with a deep playoff run, I'll I'll probably put him at two. The question was, uh Jaden. What does a second MVP do, do for Lamar Jackson's career? Um, I think it does a lot, especially like just seeing um the narrative that's kind of been thrown around Lamar's name. Um let's just start with him uh being called a running back and all this type of stuff. And we see how he's actually refined his game, refined his and then doesn't have the weapons. If, I feel like if you look at the top five quarterbacks, he's probably in the worst situation talent wise, like just surrounding talent. And then just to see what he's done, uh, you see his arm talent has gotten better. Uh, yeah. Uh, a second MVP just does a lot for Lamar and I'm happy to see, um, especially just all the stuff that's been going on in the off season. Um, yeah. I think it does a lot for him. I'm happy to see him thrive. Yeah. And then that, that, that white lady talking about some, he ain't quarterback yet enough. That was ridiculous. I, I That's just blatant racism. Yeah. Um, some some lady, I think on like Fox, or something like that. I don't want to yeah. not Fox. I don't I know who it was. Some that. some some radio. It's, like, it's, it's just like viral on Twitter, bro. It's like trending. Yeah, some some lady said he wasn't. Some some lady said he wasn't quarterback yet. Quarterbacky. Right? I'm gonna look it up. Quarterbacky. Yeah, bro. You just say he's not white, bro. Let's be real right now. Like yeah. that's just ridiculous, bro. And that's been a narrative around black quarterbacks for a long time. I think people gotta be real real careful about how they talk about uh co- black quarterbacks, like. Lamar Jackson is one of the best passers in the NFL. He is. He's just, he, he is. He hasn't had the best weapons, and he hasn't had an uh, offensive coordinator to have him pass the ball a lot. But in his MVP season, he threw for 36 touchdowns. Like, what are we talking about right now? So what do you mean he's not quarterback enough? Because he's he's hyper-athletic, and he runs the ball a lot. Like, that's just, that's just blatant racism, and that's crazy. Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, you, you can't really give me, like, 10 – 12 quarterbacks that throw the ball better than Lamar Jackson. It's not, it's not gonna happen. Like, is Daniel Jones not quarterback enough for you? Like, w- w- what are we doing? Like, no, it literally is racism, though. Like, it, no, that's it, that's ridiculous, bro. She, she followed it up with uh, uh, Lamar's not the MVP, CMC is so yeah, that kind of you're giving a, a running back the MVP award when he didn't have a historic that. season, he, he he didn't have no AP level season, and so I don't know what we what we doing I think, because, I think I think he's a candidate, but I think it's Lamar. It's Lamar's award. Yeah, Lamar's I mean, Lamar is more play, valuable. When you look at quarterback play, it has been like the weakest. So I guess yes. you putting um CMC or even like Tyreek Hill in those conversations, it makes sense. But I feel like it's obviously Lamar's war award for the taking, especially now. So yeah, that that just didn't make any sense. The MVP, the MVP race is over. He, he, he probably wouldn't even play next week. Uh, they're going to rest his starters so they have two bye weeks. So I wouldn't – I don't think he's going to play next week. So MVP is, is wrapped up, um, honestly. It's not, the, it's not the really Josh Allen can do. 
Uh, nothing really CMC could do to, to win the award. Even though Josh Allen wins the division, I think he has a, a case because you know, like I said, winning the division. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. It, like there's there's no way Lamar does not win. Oh yeah, I just, I say Lamar is winning it, but he'll he'll be uh, probably number two uh, unless it's CMC. Because like statistically, like out like Josh Allen had a better a better uh, year statistically than Lamar Jackson. But we, like as far as uh, I'm see the games, yeah, the performances yeah. you put on, yeah. Like I feel like a lot of times it's more with Heisman. Like you want to see that Heisman moment. You know what I mean? Like what was that one moment where you're like this guy's like a Heisman candidate? The past two weeks have been like Lamar's MVP moments. Like in the peak of the game. To get the best record in the NFL and to get the best record in the AFC, played his amazing two games and killed the opponents. So, all right, last right. topic. I think we kind of talked a little bit, like kind of foreshadowed this with the Cardinals upset and the Eagles. Um, I'm just gonna start with you, Latif, uh, since we kind of left it off with you. I think when we were talking about Jalen Hurts. Oh my bad! I thought you were gonna ask me a question. Um, so what were like what went wrong with the Eagles season? It's just like the Eagles heavily rely on their defensive court. The, the, the Eagles heavily rely on their coordinators. Um, they rely on Shane Steichen. They rely on their defensive coordinator. I'm blanking on his name. He's the coach for the Cardinals now. Uh, uh, Gannon, 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 Jonathan Gannon. Yeah, they heavily relied on Jonathan Gannon. They heavily relied on Shane Steichen, and. We are finding out that Nick Sirianni is not that great of a head coach. Like, it's nothing really on the on the field that he does outside of being a motivator, outside of being a fiery guy. He has a Philly personality, but he can't really call plays. He can't galvanize the troops. They look sloppy, all that stuff. Brian Johnson not doing a great job. I know it's his first year, but the offense looks completely different. Defense is terrible um, when they have, like, some of the same personnel. The linebackers suck. The corners suck. Um, just Jalen Hurst is not playing as great as he was last year because they're not calling enough plays to make it easy targets for him. They're not ca- calling enough R- uh, RPOs and all that stuff. It's a lot of quarterback draws, screens, and big shots down the field. The, off- the offense is really, really predictable, and it's, it's got uh, very, very uh, easy to game plan for. And so that's been the biggest struggles with the Eagles this season. Um, I highly doubt they're going to beat the 49ers. Like, I highly doubt it. And they're going to have to go to, back to the drawing board because Howie Roseman has done a great job building his roster and building his team. So none of the blame is going to go to him. But I think we, we, we prepared Jalen Hurts too fast. He's not he's not that. I've seen people saying he's better than Lamar Jackson. I've seen people saying he was the second-best quarterback in the uh, NFL. He's not even top five, honestly. Uh, you can make a, a case that he's not even top, like, seven. You probably put him in, like, I, eight, he's nine. He's definitely but... top ten. He's definitely top ten. Like, let's not be insane. He's definitely top ten. He's I you would... me say top <laughs> I, no, no, no. I thought, I thought you were gonna man. say I thought you were gonna say he's not even top ten. That's why I was confused. I still probably Kirk have Cousins, Kirk Cousins, Jalen Hurts, Kirk Cousins, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts, Jalen no. Hurts. No, no, no. I'm taking Jalen Kirk, Hurts over Kirk, Kirk Cousins. Kirk, Kirk Cousins playing like AB candidate with far less, far less. I'm sorry. I, Justin I don't know Jefferson. The O line was. I I hate that narrative. By the way, no. Um, the Vikings. He was, O-line, he was playing great with well, Vikings O line. He was, was playing like, great with everyone. everyone was, played insanely well. You have Addison. He was playing great Oswald, with Hawkinson. He was and playing Justin great. Jefferson. He was playing great without when Justin Jefferson went down. What are we talking about right now? He was playing hey, great without Jordan Addison. Jefferson. We're acting like he's this terrible option. Yes, it's not the he, Eagles he's, level. He's not better. Is he better he's than Smitty? With poverty, like he had a good offense. I didn't say that. I said he he did he, did he, did he or did he not play with less with Jalen Hurts? I just said yes. I don't know why you arguing with me. You're acting like he did with nothing. He played with nothing. No, I didn't say that. The situation. The situation is much worse than what Philly has because defenses matter even for quarterback play because it gets you short fields, it gets you all of that. So if you have a better defense, you you are more I, inclined to have a, you said get better wins. Good though. You've said multiple times this podcast. It was Philly. way it was it was way it was way better than to start the year when we, we were I talking think about ties have turned. I think uh Minnesota's it is. Not way better. They they're, they're more they're better coach for sure, but personnel wise, no. Uh so like I said, I I think Kirk and Jalen Hurts. I don't. It's definitely a conversation. Kirk was playing like on the MVP level. That's fine, he was playing. He was playing much better. He was playing much better than Jalen Hurts when to start the year. Are we? Am I lying? He was. That's fine. Um, if, if, if Kirk Cousins was in a situation with, with, with Philly, they, I think they would have been in the Super Bowl last year. I think they would have been in the same situation. Honestly, I do. Now, uh, is he, what about CJ Stroud? CJ Stroud, CJ Stroud better than Jalen Hurts? Conversation. I don't know. How? I He's about to take his team to the playoffs in the AFC with with. That's what I'm saying. Over, I had Kirk. I had Kirk over, I think I had Kirk over Stroud earlier, and I think I might have Stroud over Kirk now because they might make the playoffs. I don't know. That Prescott, that Prescott, or Jalen Hurts. Mm, yeah, I don't know about that one. I got things. Right. So, so it's it's, it's not having them talk to that crazy. 
J- uh, is it really? Is it really? It's oh, Kyler Murray. I have all of them in my top ten. I think. Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, or or, uh, or Jalen Hurts. Okay. Know, okay. Uh, what about Matthew Stafford? Super huh? winning quarterback. Well, Matthew Stafford was had a better year than Jalen Hurts this year. Jaylen better Hurts. year. Jaylen Why? Hurts. Why? Because Matt Stafford's 37, 36. Okay. I'm talking about, what does it have to do? What does it have to do with how they're playing? What? What does it have huh? to, what is, Tom Brady was a top top five quarterback in T in T of the league. What are we talking about right now? That's cool. What, what are we talking about right now? Guess what? I love Matt Stafford. Give me I'm a better reason. Gonna, give me a better I'm reason. I'm not going to drop off Jalen Hurts. Give I'm not going to drop a better reason. Off Jalen Hurts did last year just because he's been shaky at the end of the Matthew year. Matthew Stafford was better. Matthew I'm Stafford. Serious, honey. Matthew Stafford got injured. Huh? Matthew Stafford got injured last year, so he did not play. Matthew Stafford got injured last year, so he did not play. He had a terrible offensive line. Why is Jay, Why is Jalen Hurts better than Matthew Stafford? Because he's played way. He's played. Matt Stafford's played much better. Dual draw quarterback year. aspect. Him being a runner and a passer. I get Matt Stafford's a great passer. He's a great game manager. He's, like, insanely experienced. Like, no one has more four-quarter drives than him. I get that. I love Matt Stafford. But who, I'm going to take better, the, Who isn't better this year? Uh, if we're giving based on their teams, I'd probably say with what Stafford's had, he's played better. I think the Eagles as a whole have been depressed. The Eagles as a whole have been disappointing. Don't just put so all this. You're, you're going off. You're going off a one-year sample size with the easiest schedule in the NFL, basically, or one of the easiest schedules in the NFL Ooh. with a perfect situation to, to propel uh, Jalen Hurts over Matthew Stafford. Cool. Okay. You're blaming. Hold on. You're blaming all the Eagles' woes on Matthew Stafford or on uh, Jalen Hurts. So that's cool. I, what did I say? Did you not just hear me say that whole, whole monologue about the defense being trash and losing the coordinators? Nick Sirianni not being a head coach. What are we talking about? I never all said this that. is like it just seems to be dumping all on Jalen Hurts. You're. You had no, a, I said, I, think I, I said, had like tweets of you. You had him as top five, you had him as top seven last year. That's fine. We all had him, I had him at top seven. seven. I didn't have him at top five. I, I never said he was better than uh, Lamar Jackson. I never said he was better than uh, I, I had him at top seven. I yeah, know what I, think, I think the consensus for his podcast was he was top seven. I don't think I'll he was we had him at least top seven. That's fine. And he's had he's had it down here. So why would I not, you know, lower him? And um, Meta Stafford's had a great year, a better year than him. And he, he has a uh, not only more ex- a track record of a, more Kirk consistent. Cousins, Matt Stafford, and your top seven quarterbacks today. No, but also I might not have Jalen Hurts in my top seven. I might not. I might not what's have him in my top, top eight. What's your top seven look like? Oh, you already gave us that. Oh, like I, I don't. You, this is conversations. Like we, we having conversations. Like Kyler Murray is is honest is a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. He is. Am I lying? He is. You know I'm not lying. So. How is he getting in this top ten? I don't. They both. Have, Prescott, they have similar, they, I love uh, Kyler Murray. I've been a Kyler Murray supporter since day one. Um, Kyler Murray's had shaky moments. Let's not say he's been perfect. Who's, 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 who's the better passer, Kyler Murray or 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 um, or, or Jalen Hurts? It's Kyler Murray. I don't know why you why are you thinking that's so long? Why are you thinking so long? He's a better passer here. Yeah. And you talking about dual threat ability? We we, we know Kyler got that. Don't, and don't say, but don't say Kyler Murray didn't have any weapons. He had D Hop and Marquise Brown. Oh my God, Marquise Brown. Marquise Brown is crazy. <laughs> yeah, we talking about we talking about we talking about, we talking about Smitty and, and AJ Brown. AJ Brown is playing like a top three receiver this year. Okay, top and, D-Hop four. His, and D Hop in his peak was not playing like a top three receiver in Arizona. That's one. That's that's one player. That's one player. Don't get disrespectful. One player. Please. He's never I, had a defense. D-Hop's my favorite receiver. So I think D Hop is at the peak of his career, like. Best receiver in the league. He wasn't um, in his peak. He wasn't in his peak as Arizona. In the first year peak. or a year and a half, that one catch against the Bills, he was not in his peak, but that's one of his best catches. Um, he was great. I think the year after. Let me make sure. That's fine. You could. You could. Yeah, was great. Yeah, was great. You could put, Hurts, was you can, you can, you can put Jalen Hurts in top fifteen, top twenty, if you want. That's fine. I guess if you're trying. No, to I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Just, I'm just saying. Have, if someone said Jalen Hurts is not top ten quarterback right now, I'm not going to look at him crazy at all. I'm not. I would. I would. He's a top. I agree. I'm is Dak Prescott I'm taking, is Jalen Hurts better than Dak Prescott? Dak Prescott? I don't know why I was thinking that. I'm why? Taking, Dak, Prescott. He, Dak Prescott has done way more with he's he's been better with less. What's he, what's he done? Name one thing Dak Prescott's done besides win Walter Man, Walter Payton Man of the Year. Bro, what are you talking about? This year he's been he's been better with less. Just know. Better with less. What are he we saying? City. About that? He has City in it. That's it. Okay, cool, bro. Boy, why know. are we acting like these all these offenses are like poverty? You're acting he like has CD, he has CD, and that's it. And he has he has Mike McCarthy calling plays for him. Be for real right now. You just you just said that they relied the Eagles relied so heavily on their coaching staff, and now they're gone. And now look what happens. But it's Jalen Hurts' fault. Yes, that's, it's Jalen Hurts' fault, though. It's all Jalen Hurts. No, it's fault. not. 
He's the worst quarterback because Jane, like, Jane, Jane, did I say, not, did I say that, blaming, bro? Did I say Jane, that, bro? No, I'm saying you're blaming Dak Prescott's woes. You're blaming it on a bad team, and you're blaming it on coaching. What woes? Not, what, 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 what woes? I'm saying what off. woes? What woes? What woes? You're not saying, you're not shining light that Jalen Hurts switched the quarterback or he switched the coaching position. No, because I feel that Jalen Hurts is more reliable on the offensive coordinator than what. Because we saw that man, we know Mike McCarty's not a good offensive coordinator. We know that his web, the Dak Prescott weapons are not that good, but yet Dak Prescott is having a better season. That's my point. You understand? Um, yeah, by the way, in 2020, D Hop was a demon. Sorry. All right, Bill. I'm not um, you said you said it was you said it was his peak. It wasn't his peak. I didn't say it was his peak. I said yes, it was you did, bro. Peak. Yes, you did. <laughs> his last three years. Stop. 20, I said he was towards the end of his peak. I said, if you would have heard me, I said his last years of Houston to his first years in uh, Arizona was at his peak. And I'm right. Who's better, Who is better, Smitty or uh, or or Marquise Brown, bro? That's fine. Cool. Who's better? Okay. AJ Bringing Brown. up Marquise Brown was kind of crazy, bro. <laughs> AJ <laughs> Brown's – okay, we're acting like he didn't have a great year – or a good year with – um. He had 1,000 yards. Oh. <laughs> what's, what's Smitty got right now? Am I crazy? What's Smitty got? He got a like thousand yards too, but Smitty's just better. Oh, than okay, but now with Marquise Brown, now it sounds different. Oh, he's got a thousand yards. Like, I was just yeah, two different that, guys. I don't know. It just, it didn't sound just right. two, two, two different guys. Two different guys. Yeah. Also, didn't have the best office line in in in, in the NFL. Either. That's fine. You but, can get that. All right. Is that it? Yep. Yeah, last thing was uh, should Kyler Murray uh, should Cardinals uh, keep Kyler Murray or draft the quarterback? Yeah, let's keep Kyler Murray. Keep yeah, Kyler yeah, Murray. Let's keep. All right, um, that that wraps everything up for the first podcast of the new year. Expect a lot more. I know I say this episode. I know I know I say this every episode, but expect a lot more from us. Um, actually, I'm hoping in the summer, if everything goes right, that we can start getting some more some in person episodes. You know what I'm saying? We need. No, we definitely should. I'm not staying. I'm not staying out here next year. So I'll be. We'll be back. You know what I'm saying? We get in the gym. We gonna do. Come on, big summer, bro. Big summer. Yeah. Just uh, expect a lot of big things from us uh, coming this year. Uh, we it, it's been a year I think since we since we've been doing this, so we're getting more allocating and all that type of stuff. So yeah, just expect a lot of things from us. If you haven't subscribed, if you haven't uh, followed our socials, you see them at the top. Go ahead and do that. It's free. I don't know what you're doing, bro. Quick, quick, um, quick one thing, one thing, one thing. We got college football game today. Uh, DJ DJ Ungalele just or I don't know how to say his name, but he just signed with Florida State. Um, just saw that. But um, what are our picks for today? Who wins? Who wins? Bama and um. Oh, I think I think DJ going to Florida State is like they'll be good for another year. I don't know how much longer, but ba- be good for Bama, year. Bama and Texas. I think so too. I want Bama, Texas, or Bama. I want just want Bama. I don't care who else wins on the other side. Oh, I mean, if we lose today, I'm gonna be hurting. Oh my god, I, I would be sad. Them. I can't see Michigan win this. Jay, our no, most, I'm, our most experienced college football analyst. That's crazy. Nah, Bama. I got Bama. And who on the other side? Texas or Washington? Uh, Texas. We all the same thing. I said, sorry. All right. Yeah. Appreciate y'all for for tuning in. And um, yeah, great episode, guys. Catch y'all later.